Dear ladies and gentlemen, Pani Topanova, this is a sixth episode of the series of conversations and interviews with intellectuals in Ukraine for those out there who are keen to learn more, think deeper, and hear from the original sources. В етері шостий випуск із серії розмов та інтерв'ю з інтелектуалами в Україні для тих, хто хоче дізнатися більше, думати глибше і чути з першого джерел. This is a project of Pan Ukraine who are in Ukraine right now under the dark and chaotic conditions of the continuing Russian invasion. There are no words enough to express our admiration of your dedication and commitment for the guys at Pan Ukraine as we are all Ukrainians who are fighting to defend their freedom now. Це проєкт Пан Україна, який зараз перебуває всією командою в темних і хаотичних умовах триваючого російського вторгнення. Бракує слів, аби висловити наше захоплення колегам їхньою самовідданістю і наполегливостю, бо зараз ми усі українці, які боронять свою свободу. The project is co-hosted by Pan Ukraine, by Pan International, which has continued to provide a platform for freedom of expression for those currently under the highest risk. Our partners for today are Pan America, Fundacja Olgi Tokarczuk, the Ukrainian Institute, the Ukrainian Institute London, the Harvard University Ukrainian Research Institute, and the Harman Institute and Columbia University. We are streaming today's event at all partners' Facebook pages. Співорганізатором проєкту є міжнародний пен, який продовжує надавати платформу для свободи вираження слова для тих, хто зараз знаходиться в групі найвищого ризику. Сьогодні Нашими партнерами є Пан Америка, Фундація Ольги Токарчук, Український інститут, Український інститут Лондона, Український науково-дослідний інститут Гарвардського університету та Інститут Гаррімана при Колумбійському університеті. Ми транслюємо сьогоднішню подію на всіх партнерських сторінках у Facebook. Our speakers today are those who can put the light on the global cultural context of the ongoing situation. The event will be held in English, so I'll switch in English to English. Я перемикаюся на англійську, тому що захід сьогодні відбувається англійською, як і усі наші попередні наступні. Our speaker, Остап Сливинський, is a poet, translator, essayist and literary critic. He is also vice president of PEN Ukraine. Сливинський leads a number of international literary festivals activities. He was also an organizer of a series of readings entitled Literature Against Aggression. In 2015, he collaborated with composer Bogdan Seyhin on a media performance preparation dedicated to the civilian victims of the war in the eastern of Ukraine. Slavinsky teaches Polish literature and literary theory at Ivan Franco National University in Lviv. He joins us from Lviv today and we'll hold the dialogue with our special guest today of the Poland's, Poland's most celebrated and beloved author, a winner of the Man Booker's International Prize and the Nobel Prize in Literature, Olga Tokarczuk, who conducts her novels in a tension between cultural opposites, nature versus culture, reasons versus madness, male versus female, home versus alienation. Today, we will speak also about the cultural opposition of two civilizations as well. Let's hope that today's conversation gives us a wider panorama of an almost neglected chapter in European history. It is a chapter that continues. Olga, I'll stop. Stage is yours. Thank you, Cześć, Olga. Dzień dobry, chciałabym powiedzieć, ale mówimy po polsku czy po angielsku? The event is in English, please. So I would like to say Dzień Dobry, which means uh, good day, but it's for sure not good day for us, especially for you, but for entire Europe, I think. And first of all, I would like to ask you, perhaps it's a stupid question, how do you feel there? You are in Lviv now. Uh, yes, yes, Olga, uh, I'm in Lviv now. and. Um, uh, well, it's uh, it's very hard to, to describe the feeling now because uh, in the very in the very beginning uh, of the aggression, uh, which was uh, uh, somehow expected, as as we know, uh, we we know that it, it had been predicted in some way, uh, 
it had been even described in, in detail uh, how it would uh, uh, happen. But uh, basically, of course, no one was ready for a war. I think it's, it, it's impossible to, to get ready for war. For war, uh, okay. even despite, yeah, yeah, even even this, uh, even despite the, despite some technical preparations. Uh, for example, we got instructions how to how to prepare um, our uh, alarm bags, uh, how to be, behave during the air raid alarm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, uh, emotionally, you cannot be ready for something uh, something like war. Uh, so it was a confusion in the very beginning. It was it was the huge confusion. Um, nobody could uh, uh, basically we, we we all knew what to do um, because we had some um, instructions. Uh, we had some even scenarios uh, uh, prepared for a case of war, but um, but uh, profoundly no one knew what to do. Uh, now the in these days today we have uh, 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 17th day of, of war if I count it right um, but still we are in a state of huge confusions huge unpredictability uh, as we know uh, all negotiations uh, the negotiations that are carried out that are being carried out now uh, are still unsuccessful and no one can predict what will happen. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 in the same time, uh, uh, almost each of us uh, found some role for him or herself. Mm -hmm. we, we somehow, uh, we, we are trying to, and we, uh, we already somehow managed to organize a new way of life. With the second week of the war means that uh, we are finding our new places and new reality. Someone is, someone joined the army. Some, some, someone joined the territorial defense forces. Someone, uh, the others uh, help the refugees. Um, someone helps uh, collecting uh, necessary supplies for the army. Uh, uh, someone helps uh, inform uh, people throughout the world what is going on now in Ukraine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, some new roles, of course. Uh, the best solution is to do what you do the best. You know, mm -hmm. not uh, uh, the, the 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 country uh, doesn't need uh, forty five million of heroes. You know. Mm -hmm. um, that means that we we uh, it's uh, it's stupid to um, to be eager to die, for example, to sacrifice your life. Uh, it's not it's not it's the final solution, and we should not we should not um, uh, uh, point it out as or uh, consider it as our as our aim. Uh, just every Every everyone should do what he or she does the best. Mm -hmm. yeah. How how is it? How is it? How does it look like from Poland? I know Olga that you you are uh, taking care of Ukrainian refugees and you are supporting us from the very first day of the Russian invasion and commanding this uh, worldwide. Uh, how 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 is it? How does does it look like from Polish from the Polish point of view? Yeah, it's um, it, every everybody um, repeats the same phrase. There is lack of words to understand, to explain, to to say something because it's really. I feel perhaps this is first time in in my life. I don't have words to to name everything what's going uh, around me. And do you remember, Ostap, we were planning to meet in Wrocław in uh, June for the translation conference. So uh, two weeks ago, we were 
you know, so optimistic that we will meet and now it's uh, completely, every, everything completely changed. I think that we are quite good informed by our media. And of course, all the time in my house, the television is open. I'm sitting all the time in media, in my internet. So I think, but all the time I, I'm very interested in this personal point of view. So for instance, I would like to know uh, where you have been when the war began. What was the moment? Can you tell us, tell me? How did yeah. you know that the war, that the Putin um, invaded your country? Yeah, I, I, I re of course, I remember it perfectly well. Um, the, uh, as, as, we, as we know, as, as it's wise, widely known, the invasion happened early in the morning, by about, about 5 a.m. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very, it's, uh, it's a especially cynical uh, way to, to, begin, to begin an invasion. Uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to invade the sleeping people, people who are most relaxed. Uh, it's the, the time of, uh, of the day when uh, the people are, 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 they are, they are unprepared, they are weak, they are mm -hmm. relaxed. They, they are... The same was with the second war the, of the yeah. 1st of September. It was also in, very in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's classic, so it's classic. Mm -hmm. um, and I woke up uh, uh, very early uh, uh, at uh, 6.30, I think, I am, um, because I got a message uh, from my friend. Uh, the friend, uh, he, he's not the closest friend of mine. Uh, he, uh, we communicated about five years uh, ago. Uh, last time and and so it was it was quite strange that he wrote me uh, at that time so early in the morning and I remember the phrase a uh, horrible news uh, I read only these two words uh, mm -hmm. from from his quite long message and I understood what happened mm -hmm. I read these two words and I rushed to to the to the computer to open the news and then I understood that that uh, Russia invaded us, and of course it was the strategy strategy of uh, immediate shock, um, uh, but that means of uh, total attack. Uh, Ukraine was attacked from different from th three sides at the same time, uh, but it also was shelled, uh, and among the cities. Uh, shelled by the missiles uh, were also the cities on on the on the west so in the, in the western part of Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, which <clears throat> had to create an impression was intended to create an impression that all Ukraine uh, uh, is uh, found itself immediately in their arms that they captured all the Ukraine in one moment. Of course, that later we realized that it's not true. Uh, that and, and they are uh, until now they are uh, they did not manage um, to um, uh, to move their troops uh, uh, deeply in, into the territory of Ukraine. So they are they are biting us still mm -hmm. from from the on, on the peripheries. You know, but, uh, these these bites are very very painful, but it's biting like uh, you know, on the peripheries of Ukrainian territory, with exception of um, missile shelling, missile shellings, which of course uh, they they can <coughs> pin it uh, from the very very big uh, distance as well. But the first the first um, uh, well emotion was total confusion, of course, uh, mm -hmm. because you can. Uh, can can get prepared for war. Mm -hmm. That's true. And what 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 about you? How how did you uh, uh, react uh, learning the that that Ukraine that, that Russia attacked Ukraine? What was your first emotion? We were completely shocked, and I saw people on the street. I was in Warsaw at the time, 
and I saw people on the street crying, which was Polish people, because I think that this situation is uh, for Poles very clear. It remembers the situation from the Second War that was uh, just in a very similar situation. And also it is now similar because uh, when Poland was invaded by Germans, but Nazis in uh, 1939, Poland had uh, tractats for, um, and uh, it felt, Poland felt um, protected by Great Britain, for instance, from, and from other countries. But in fact, Poland stayed alone and the same situation now is Ukraine. Of course, I know that there are sanctions and you know, many um, great uh, economical support and so on, but this situation sometimes it's, it looks very uh, surrealistic. And I, I think in metaphors, in, in symbols, in situations. So sometimes in, it looks for me, what do you think about this metaphor? That people are sitting around the table um, talking, drinking, eating, and now in one moment, one person around the table starting to beat uh, his neighbor, and the nobody react really. The, the 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 victim is beaten, and the reactions of another people sitting around the the, the table is uh, just uh, expressing support giving some, I don't know, something to, to, to um, um, I don't know, to, to, to comfort, but really we are witness, all, uh, all of us, we are witnesses of uh, enormous act of aggression and um, violence. And I feel not completely not comfortable to seeing, and I'm very disappointed um, because of uh, lack of the stronger reactions from, uh, stronger perhaps military reaction from the other countries. So, um, situation is absurdic, I would say, completely absurdic, because you are alone, fighting and dying. Uh, you know me, Ostap, and you know that for me, this uh, such a, uh, words like like nation. Uh, I always believe that nation is something very symbolic and not real, but real is human being and real is the life of of um, human beings of people. So I cannot really manage in with these thoughts that people are dying. Also. The situation with hospitals and bombing hospitals and the major uh, damage of schools and cities and um, animals, what's going on with animals completely abandoned. Um, and from the other side, I can see, first, I would like to say that I adore your, how you are brave and how you are decent, in fact, in this enormous crazy situation. I would like to really um, express my, uh, my um, how to say, I really like and I, I really adore how you treat uh, the Russian soldiers who uh, the Ukrainian army captured on the field, so on the battlefields. And this uh, entire um, idea of telephone, of calling uh, of mothers of their son, and also to give the soldiers voice to say something about their own situation. So it is, I think I, 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 I can see this first time uh, in, during the war. I never never saw such a, such a, uh, um, decent uh, behavior of, 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 of soldiers, of army, of Ukrainian army. So there are many such a things and we are watching uh, ev every single afternoons and evenings what's going on and we are really with you. And it, this is also our war, in fact. Not only that we will be the next one, but I think the Russian army, Putin, 
invade this democratic world, this uh, civilization uh, body, I would say, to, to, to which we also belong with, uh, with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very, it's very important that that what that what you are saying, and uh, of course your uh, your support. Uh, on on one hand, uh, I must agree with you that we we feel a little bit lonely, but on the other hand, on the other hand, we we feel a huge huge support from uh, from the side of uh, of other Europeans and Americans and the other nations. And uh, first of all, and. Uh, um, uh, I think that it's most important and it's most most natural that we feel this support from the from the, the nations uh, which were part of uh, this uh, uh, socialist world uh, uh, during the during the Cold War and the nations and the, the countries uh, which know what does this uh, Russian Soviet domination mean. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we we feel huge uh, support and huge understanding, which is is also very important because uh, <clears throat> there there can be support without a deep understanding. Sometimes I feel unfortunately that uh, the people who uh, want to support us they express some uh, some things that um, are um, obviously. Um, uh obviously false for us uh, for example they uh sometimes people uh, express their hopes that we can um, um uh, we can negotiate with russia and, and negotiate some kinds of peace with them uh unlike the the people who, who luckily <laughs> uh, uh, uh never had any uh, relation and close mm -hmm. relations with Russians. Uh, you, the Poles and uh, Lithuanians, uh, Czechs and Latvians, etc., and other other nations from the uh, former uh, East Bloc under understand perfectly well that you cannot normally negotiate with someone like Russians, Russian elite, political elite, because the only <clears throat> the only language they understand is language of power. And the only kind of peace which is acceptable for them is the peace uh, where they dominate over the others. The Russian version of peace is not based on the consensus, on the dialogue, uh, uh, and on the, the respect uh, of the interests of the other, but it's based on a total domination. Uh, they can live peacefully only with those who depend on them or those who under totally under their domination. This is the only uh, version of peace state they accept and they admit. That's why I, I, must, I must say that I hate the word peace. Uh, and, uh, the, the, the last years, it's not about the last days or weeks, but at least uh, after uh, 2014, after annexation of Crimea and uh, after occupation of uh, eastern parts of Ukraine, uh, I, I hate the word peace uh, because it's overused and it's misused. And that's why I, um, I'm, I'm usually quite suspicious when uh, representatives of Russian side um uh either uh so-called neutral persons or even uh, um people who oppose themselves to putin's regime when they use the word peace not when they don't use uh, the word uh war aggression when they don't say we are sorry uh, we feel ashamed that we represent the country, the aggressive state, uh, which dares to uh, uh, to attack a peaceful nation, peaceful uh, neighbor, but if they instead declare uh, their wish for peace, it's it's too weak. It's it's too neutral. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. 
it's not enough. And I uh, some, sometimes I, I think that they they uh, they can't understand what what do I mean when I say this formula is not for you. It's too weak for you. It it does not justify. You. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that that that's that's what uh, what uh, people from Poland, people from Lithuania, etc., understand perfectly well. Mm -hmm. You cannot you cannot live peacefully with uh, this sort of. I I don't like the word mentality, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, this is something like. Uh, some um, something like uh, historical Russian mentality, based also on a culture. I, 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 th uh, there, there's one thing I wanted to ask you, Olga. Uh, uh, you probably know Russian literature, Russian classics. Uh, uh, what's your opinion uh, concerning the role of Russian classics, so-called great, great Russian? literature, great Russian culture in what is happening now? Or is it completely innocent and we, we shouldn't blame it? Mm, of course not, of course not. I think uh, you, 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 you can ask me the same about uh, when we could uh, come back to the past and uh, during the second war about German literature and German philosopher. And this is, it's, it's too simply to find uh, just uh, regular answer for this question. But I think um, I, you're right that uh, in many conversation when I was uh, uh, somewhere abroad on the Western side, uh, that was very obvious then that uh, my point of view, my perspective on Russians were different than the French writers, or I don't know, uh, British writers, especially German writers. So uh, you write that we um, had, have, in fact, in general, um, kind of uh, perhaps neurotic point of view on them, on Russia. And sometimes I, I was asking myself, is it neurotic? Is it uh, just the position of somebody who was a victim in past, or he was invaded, and it changed our perception. Because it would be quite dangerous, I think, to create theories that this is just a different wild culture or different civilization from, I don't know, Asia and so on. Uh, it's, uh, it, it has something to do with the, the, the structure of power and uh, the many, many years of not, um, of a very suppressed society. Uh, and this society, society couldn't really um, overwork the, the ways, the, 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 the tools, uh, how to manage with such a, a power. So it's um, liter Russian literature. I don't know. It was a, always a question of classes. I think that the, the the high class was very westernized, and they had a very big access to Western culture. But in fact, war has nothing to do with literature, and so it's completely. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to 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 create any theories how it really works. Mm -hmm. it seems that, to me know. that, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, even today we had in, at home such a small discussion about Dostoevsky. But it seems to me very dangerous to take to discuss about literature and to blame blame it for for anything. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I. Uh... I saw an interesting study uh, on Dostoevsky's uh, demons. And uh, um, of course, Crime and Punishment and Demons, two, two works by Dostoevsky, which uh, uh, in fact uh, try to justify the, uh, the criminal, justify the crime. In some mm -hmm. sense. When you look from the point of view of the criminal, at, at at, at re reality, uh, your um, uh, either your moral system uh, 
changes a little bit. And uh, I, I remembered it, <coughs> I recalled it, uh, uh, when I listened to a press conference given uh, by a um, Russian pilot uh, who uh, bombed uh, peaceful Ukrainian cities, um, uh, uh, his, his, plane, uh, his plane was shot off and uh, he was captured. And then uh, he was uh, he had um, he was given a, uh, an opportunity to express uh, to give a conference. It's it's really maybe it's for 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 these soldiers and officers, it's the only way to express their opinion because uh, in Russia, uh, I suspect that in Russia they would they will, would never have this chance. And he said that. Uh, he he could uh, um, uh, refuse from execution this order that he was completely aware that uh, he was expected to bomb the peaceful city, to bomb the civilian objects, critical infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, that it's not about the military infrastructure, and he could avoid. He could uh, refuse from executing this order, but he didn't. And he said, I'm sorry. And after that, uh, I had a very interesting discussion with uh, one of my um, Russian friends um, who said, uh, yes, it's awful that what he did, it's, uh, it's horrible and it's a huge crime against humanity, bombing peaceful cities. But please, uh, try to look at the situation from his point of view. Uh, he was so deeply confused. It's so huge moral confusion that he, he was sent to, uh, to, uh, to ex execute this um, kind of order. And, but I, uh, I don't think that uh, we have to try to look at the at every situation from the point of view of the criminal. He is the criminal. He could refuse from executing the order, but he did, and therefore he's a criminal. I think that uh, maybe it's really something what is in the very structure of Russian culture to try this um, <coughs> intention to justify the criminal. And it's also, uh, it's, um, and to blame the victim in the, in the same, in, in the, in the same mm -hmm. time. To blame the victim, Ukrainians are, um, uh, they are guilty for uh, what is happening to them. They are, they provoked uh, Russians, they are guilty. Uh, Russia was found, it's all, all these things are cliches taken from, uh, um, recent Russian propaganda that uh, R Russia Russia was uh, um, uh, it found itself in a situation when it was uh, made to was pressed to forced forced to act against some imaginary danger from Ukraine's side while the uh, uh, the commanders who order, uh, to shoot at the civilians are innocent. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that some uh, uh, huge moral trick, a um, uh, horrible moral trick, which is in the in a very <coughs> in a very uh, basement of mm -hmm. Russian way of thinking about the world. I think. Maybe I'm not true. Sure, that, that, that's my reflection. You have to, I think that we have to remember that refusing the, uh, to, to um, refusing to, to uh, against common comments uh, given to soldiers is a kind of heroism. So I think that heroism is not, uh, let's say, available to, to everybody. Uh, those soldiers, uh, the Ukrainian side showed in the television they seem to me very weak, poor guys, young boys even, who really didn't know where are they and what's going on. And um, mm, 
I wouldn't expect from them such a heroism. And of course, I know that war, what war change, changes. Uh, war changes all, also our way of thinking and we are much more keen to be sharp in our opinions and be rather more uh, black and white. And um, we have a tendency to use uh, stronger words in description of another person. So I would, um, it's also very harmful for me, this changing, changed language, the language who is not so uh, subtle and so uh, delicate and so, because we are working in language and we know that to have such a uh, rich, uh, fruitful language, we can, with such a language, to describe reality in, in a better, in a more um, ideal uh, way. So let's, during the war, let's don't lose this kind of language. Don't be, you know, too, too black and white. I think that the war is, uh, of course, there are many criminals. And I think that Putin and people who are uh, his uh, co cooperators, they are criminals. And that after the war, um, in the end, I would insist to take them to the court and to, to, to do everything. It must be. There are, from the Western side, there are such a small uh, uh, thoughts that, oh, it's better to leave Putin uh, alone somewhere free, not to make more chaos uh, in the world. But I think, no, there is law and uh, such a people should uh, be, um, should um, have paid for they did, in fact. But uh, it's very, very complicated situation and we should take care about our language from both, of si both sides. You know what I mean, Ostap? Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. It's it's very uh, it's very important thing that what 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 you are saying, and um, I must say that I feel <coughs> I feel um, a very something very similar to what to what you said in the very end that I don't, I feel some lack of words, and um, uh, I uh, dis decided maybe it was not about the decision, but I felt that I have to um, to let the other people speak. Uh, that what uh, many writers did during the they used to do during wartime, or right after the war, right after the Second World War, um, giving uh, a chance to to the other people, to the witnesses, to speak. And I I uh, I be began to to collect a short monologues of the people uh, who were who are engaged in a war in some way, to the refugees, to the uh, <clears throat> to the soldiers, to the volunteers, uh, and uh, it's some sort of evidence, uh, human evidence of what is happening. Mm, uh, I, I call it words, words of war. Uh, every wo every word is um, um, is being redefined um, uh, with this, this fragment of a monologue. Of, that what people are talk are telling is horrible on one side, on the other side it's priceless. It's, it's evidence also, maybe also for a court, for a court for human rights. And I think it's our uh, uh, big duty, our collective duty as as uh, human beings, as the humanity, mm -hmm. to call them to court, all mm -hmm. these calls afterwards. Mm -hmm. I would like also to, to, to mention in the end of our talk, because I, I can look on the uh, clock, uh, that um, I'm really very uh, proud, I would say, what, uh, how Poles is uh, uh, behaving uh, uh, um, in the matter of refugees in Poland. Because you know, we talk about it. Then two months ago, we had a very similar, not very similar, but much smaller situation with refugees from uh, Iraq and Syria on the Belarusian border. And then uh, I'm not happy how Polish people, not in general, but uh, our government and uh, some of Polish people 
um, behaved uh, towards these refugees. But now it's completely different situation and we try to understand what's happened really. And the, the thing is that the Poles and the Poles perceived Ukrainians as a very close people, especially because of the language, even if we don't understand each other, to be honest. Uh, mm, but culturally, I don't know. Uh, so uh, in Poland, I would say it's such a huge social movement now. Everybody is helping. Everybody ev uh, whom I know is any, in, in any way is involved into helping refugees. So it's really, really, I never saw from the time of Sol solidarity in 80s such a big movement. So I think that it will change also our um, relationship, perhaps for, for a longer time in the future. And I'm also, in this dark time, I'm, I'm also very proud and happy that we are still, as a Polish, have so many, um, such a warm heart for, for towards Ukrainian. So, um, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Olga. It's, it's priceless, and in in, in such uh, uh, tough, uh, horrible circumstances, we really see uh, who is our friend, who is not. And uh, I'm happy that um, uh, maybe trying to to leave something positive uh, for the very very end of, of our conversation. Uh, I, I'd say only one thing. Uh, I'm happy that we uh, we uh, Ukrainians and Poles managed to overcome some bad things that uh, maybe were in our relations and facing this huge danger, huge common danger for all of us. Mm -hmm. What Thank do you, you think? Ah, we are finished, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please just closing remarks. Mm -hmm. Ms. Olga, please. Yes, just please close the remark what you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I don't believe that this war will, uh, we will have this war for the next three months, as you, Olga, said, as, as, a, as a just uh, um, something which is uh, um, how this uh, specialist thinking about this uh, war, but uh, I'm sure that it will come, the, the end will come much sooner, and I wish you wish all of us uh, this, that the world will, will end uh, sooner as we think, I hope. We'll stop. Yeah. Um, well, um, I think that uh, we, uh, we, we, have to, um, we have to listen to the specialists that predict something bad. Uh, they, um, I, I remember how Wars. Military specialists at the very uh, very beginning of the war said that um, probably after 72 hours, uh, Ukraine would give up. It didn't happen, as, as we know perfectly well. And uh, I also hope that uh, the war will, will not last for next three or four months. Uh, that and I I I I believe that our victory is very close. I um, 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 I believe in uh, once again. I'm uh, I'm deeply convinced that uh, we as as a nation are uh, are able are able to defend ourselves. We are doing it uh, very successfully now, and of course uh, we'll win, and it will be. It will be that we uh, one day we will wake up in a new world, in a new story, uh, mm -hmm. better story, uh, where the, where Russia will be an ordinary peripheral country somewhere in the west, eastern outskirts of uh, Western civilization, and Ukraine will be a free democratic country um, and will be a part of uh, European family. And with uh, um, surrounded with, with, with friends like Poles, Lithuanians, Slovaks, Czechs. 
French. There is, there is no doubt that Ukraine win. That's for sure. Yeah, I guess those specialists who were calculating, they didn't count on Ukrainian spirit. This is what changed the whole settlement. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Ostap. You really explained a lot of the cultural background, explained a couple of problematic questions and continued the discussion on values and language of war initiated earlier. And I want to use a chance to thank Poland for all the ongoing support, solidarity and open doors for all the Ukrainian women and children, those who lost their homes. This fight for the dignity we already won indeed. And there are no words to explain what is going on and why, but as Ostap said, there is no possible way to be prepared to the war as far as you are not the aggressor. What can we take from these conversations is deeper understanding of the cultural roots of the ongoing invasion. And here I will quote one of the comments in chat, but how can there be any peace without the dialogue? Thank you for those dialogues on war and let's hope for the continuing dialogue in the other level. We are grateful to our partners for today's event, Pan America, Fundacja Olgi Tokarczuk, the Ukrainian Institute, the Ukrainian Institute London, the Harvard University Ukrainian Research Institute, and the Harman Institute at Columbia University, and for the cross-streaming service on all the partners page. Gratitude, of course, to Pan Ukraine, which continues to stand at the front lines in the name of freedom and truth. Pan International is proud to be a platform that supports freedom of expression. And this is one of the biggest fights which is happening in Ukraine right now. Please follow our page to be informed about further events over the next week. The next episode will be broadcast on Wednesday, 16 of March, 6 p.m. Kyiv time, 2 p.m. London time. And I'm delighted to announce our speakers for episode seven. Henry Marsh, an English neurosurgeon and pioneer of neurosurgical advances in Ukraine in a conversation with Mariana Savka an Ukrainian poet, children writer, literary critic, editor, and co-founder of Old Lion Publisher House. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Ostap. Thank you for this deep conversation and sharing all your opinions and all the last news. And for all our viewers, follow our dialogues and work, follow Olga's Twitter, I do, and Ostap's actions, share the stream and stand with Ukraine. This is our shared responsibility today. Thank you.